Okay, hello and welcome to one of the tutorials for creating land for Eagle Dynamics Flaming Cliffs. Um, this probably pertains to Black Shark and Flaming Cliffs too, but since I don't have it on my laptop, I am going to be using Flaming Cliffs 1 version 1.12. So, we're starting off here with a piece of land. Now, what I since it's only part, what I'm just going to do really quickly is clone the bottom part, which I'm going to do right now. Just select it all, make sure I get the dummies, but not the airfield. And then I'm going to do a copy. And then I'm just going to move it up and apply a mirror modifier so the textures and the vertexes will line up correctly. And there I go down to pull down, select mirror. And then uh, since it doesn't do it right, I have to click on the Y. And now I'm going to move it together. I'm going to use the snap tool to snap it together. And there we go. Zoom out. Deselect the snap tool. It all looks good. Just make sure in my perspective that it actually is viewed correctly. And that looks pretty good. Alright, so now we're going to enlarge the top view again. And what I'm going to actually do right now is create the LSA2 file, which is the ground. Now the key for an airfield, which I'm doing right now, is all the polygons the airfield rests on must be at the exact same level. So here I'm just checking and checking the Z value in the bottom middle, making sure it's all 131.828 meters. Now we check the other side since it rests on two different pieces. And this all looks good. All right, we're going to deselect that. Now, as I just said, we're going to create the LSA2 file because you need that in order to export an airfield. So I'm going to go ahead and hide these two other pieces of the airfield since it's not needed. And it will just mess up the export. And, whoops. And I'm going to go ahead and, what am I doing? Oh, I'm applying the um, the textures to the land mesh. Just drag them on over. Simple as that. Now, like I said before, I mirrored them, so that's why it's the same texture twice. Now, we're just going to make sure that the land meshes are, in fact, linked to the dummy. going to select everything, go into the plugins, uh, which one is it? There we go, surface tab, export surface, and I'm just going to name it land.lsa2, and uh oh. So you need to point to the materials.lma.lua file right there, so you click on that little button and then you search for it. And since I don't know where mine is at the moment, I'm just going to pause the video while I do a quick look for it. And if I can figure out how to pause it. And there it is in my search result, now that I'm back. So I go there. I'm trying to find location. Now, oh, where is this guy? There it is. So I'm just going to open it and make sure the schematics is set to land. Just going to double check that. And then we're just going to export it. And I'm going to export it back to the my working directory, which I've been using. Which was files. Rename that. Oops. I'm going to rename that to land.lsa2. Nope, LSA Alright, looks like that exported good. So now we're going to go ahead and create the runway. The onlay is the actual texture that you will see. And the .rn or runway file is how the game interprets a runway, which is the single line or spline right there. Now in order to make it recognize as a runway, 
go into user defined like I just did it really quickly and make sure it says VPP equals true. So we're going to select the the online portion and make sure it is set to runway. So that way the game knows that it's a runway piece and not a land piece or a taxiway or a piece of water or whatnot. So we're going to hide that because we're going to export the runway portion. Go into our tools. Now we need to select our surface file so it knows where to place it. Then hit export airfield and as mentioned before in the wiki page the file name anapa.max must correspond to the runway that you were making. So you quickly saw there, I just did a quick export. Now I'm exporting the onlay portion. Let's just make sure the schematics and material are set right. Go under superficial, export, and just hit save. And we're just going to close this. I don't want to save any changes. If it'll close, there we go. Oop, gonna kill that. Close out of that. Now we have to um, drag our files into from our working directory into our lock-on directory. So I have a few shortcuts right here. So the first one we're going to copy over is the runway file or the RN. So we're going to drag that over, overwrite it. Make sure to make backups if you want. Then we are going to go do the sub file. Let's drag this guy over. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to do the land file first, I guess. Um, well, and I guess since I want to keep everything in the working directory, I'm just going to copy the files back. Instead of dragging them, just do a copy and paste. I guess the context files don't show up in a video. So now we're going to drag over the onlay file, and it needs to be named onlay underscore vpp. So I'm just going to, I didn't remember that, so I'm just going to, whoops, just going to edit this file name to match. If I can spell this. And then we're just going to do a copy paste. I guess that context menu showed up. And yes, we are going to overwrite the file. So now the step we have to do is to compile the scenes uh, using the assemble scenes.exe program. I'm just going to go down here. You have to edit the config file. You know, just do an edit, and the result is the output file, the scene file where everything's merged. And you just type in the path of where you want it to be. To do is what you want it to do. So for right now, we want it to compile the one runway into it. This is my other one. If you have a scene file that .sc, you can just put that right underneath and name it scene. Ground mesh, point to your LSA2 file, model paths, and so on. Leave everything else alone, such as the display mode, and then run it by doing assemble scenes.bat. Then you will see the black box. Um, there's no object since we didn't make any objects, so you can just go ahead and hit OK, or any key, I suppose. And now we close this, and now we have to go find our output file. Should be in the scene folder, or wherever you selected it to go. And there it is the high abt now we're going to delete that high and we're going to rename this and then we should be ready to test our game